Our last case very quickly is a nine-year-old German Shepherd. The owner reports lethargy and abdominal swelling for the past week. And as, as you all know, some owners will not seem to notice gross muscle loss and cachexia if the belly is swelling. They assume the dog is putting on weight. So clearly in this example, um, this was not weight gain per se. This was certainly fluid in the belly. But we take this ECG and this is what we see. So this is something I haven't, um, we haven't gone through in a lot of detail, but I'd like just to um, see what you think of this. Um, so I've given you some options here. So frequent atrial premature complexes, frequent ventricular premature complexes, electrical alternans, or sinus arrhythmia. And I'll give you a little bit more time and then we'll, then we'll um, see what you all think this is. Okay, so let's broadcast the results. The majority of you went for electrical alternance, which is absolutely correct. Well done. So let me just explain for those of you who aren't familiar with electrical alternance what it is. But first of all, just to point out what we're seeing here, we've got a sinus complex. And then we've got another complex that looks similar. It's narrow but it's taller. And if you only had just these two beats to look at, you could say, well, maybe that's a sinus and maybe that's a ventricular premature, but it's not that wide. But when we look at the pattern, we see small, tall, small, tall, small, tall. That's the calibration signal here. Sorry. So that's telling you that it's standard sensitivity, 10 millimeters per millivolt, small, tall, small. So we've got an alternating height of the QRS complexes, but the QRS complexes are narrow and upright. So most likely they're sinus in origin. So what actually is electrical alternance? Well, it's the beat to beat variation in the amplitude of the QRS complex as the heart swings within a fluid filled pericardial sac. So you can imagine if you've got a big sack of fluid and the heart suspended in it, as the heart swings towards the lead that's, that the ECG is measuring at that time, the amplitude of the signal will increase. And as it swings away from the lead, it will decrease. So you get this alternating height of QRS complex. But remember, this is not present in all cases of pericardial, pericardial effusion. So don't feel, if you don't see it, that it can't be a pericardial effusion. That's not the case at all. But if you do see it, it's highly likely to be due to pericardial effusion. And if it's not present, you may just see a sinus tachycardia, so increased sympathetic tone, um, with a decreased amplitude QRS complex. Now you get a sinus tachycardia because the fluid in the pericardial sac is compressing the heart, decreasing cardiac output, and the heart rate goes up to try to compensate. And the decreased amplitude is because the fluid in the sac dampens down the electrical signal that reaches the body surface. But typically we would always want to double check with thoracic radiograph um, or an echo or and or an echo if, if we have access to these and just very quickly to to illustrate you know this dog had a, a huge cardiac silhouette very crisp edges because the pericardial sac isn't moving significantly the heart's beating inside it whereas normally if you don't have pericardial fluid present the heart with the pericardial sac tightly adhered is beating so you get a little bit of movement artifact to the edges of the of the cardiac silhouette but here very crisp edges and the silhouette is clearly taking up way more than two thirds of the uh, chest here. And we've also got air in the stomach uh, because of aerophagia. And then if we look at this on echocardi echocardiography, those of you that do some heart ultrasound um, will be familiar with this anechoic um, pleural effusion that we see. So here, um, around the heart. And this particular view, um, those of you who aren't familiar with left apical four chamber view, we're looking at the heart upside down. Unfortunately, echoes don't come labeled, but left ventricle, left, uh, sorry, right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. This is also a good time while the fluid is there to have a hunt for a tumor um, before you drain the fluid as it's much easier to see when the, or tumor when you've got the fluid around it for contrast. But certainly if you see this anechoic pericardial effusion, you can be confident that this would be a suitable case to drain. 